Imagine the hype. Trailers bursting with stunning visuals, promise epic adventures. You pre-order, counting down the days. Finally, it's here. You boot it up, ready to dive in, only to be met with a buggy mess, missing features, or monetization schemes that feel like a slap in the face. Ouch. But here's the thing. Sometimes, those companies have to say sorry. Finish lines this way. We will start with Friday the 13th. Gun Media's Friday the 13th with Ilphonic. At debut, the game experienced a number of challenges, including lengthy maintenance schedules, failed database login attempts, and network issues. The troubles were so severe that Gun Media ultimately apologized for all the server outages and offered free DLC in an attempt to win back the trust of the player base. Unfortunately, because the DLC was unable to pass Microsoft's certification procedure, Xbox One gamers had to wait longer than PC or £4 players. Additionally, there was a persistent memory problem with the Xbox version. However, that was only the very beginning. Server problems are something that players can handle, for a limited period of time, of course. But some players are boycotting the game and the studio, because of Gun Media's severe punishment of players who assist the Jason player and pose as representatives of either Ilphonic or Gun Media. Next we have Forza Motorsport 7. Forza Motorsport 7, the most recent game in Turn 10 Studios' Forza series, was offered to early access players earlier in 2017. VIP users, however, soon discovered that the service had altered in between installments. Once 25 races were completed, VIPs were no longer awarded double XP. People were anticipating the same benefits they had in Forza Motorsport 6, thus, they were understandably incensed at the developer's lack of communication. Turn 10 apologized right away to owners of Ultimate Editions and VIP memberships, pledging to be more open about what their purchases contain and don't. Four more Forza Edition automobiles were also given to VIPs. Turn 10 stated that they were trying to stabilize the performance problems that PC users were experiencing in addition to resolving the criticism around the VIP memberships. This is something that ought to have been done before the game's release. Now we will discuss Need for Speed. Payback. The week after EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2 controversy, Ghost Games updated Need for Speed. Payback, presumably to avoid becoming the next target, by removing the game's predatory progression system, which heavily relied on microtransactions. A developer posted a list of all the new modifications on Reddit. The same developer also stated that these changes were intended to be made in the first place because of user input rather than out of concern for more negative reactions. Although EA never formally apologized for any of the issues with the game, they did say in a blog post that they had been considering user comments. We've heard loud and clear that upgrading several autos is frequently too time-consuming. We concur. Thus, this is something we've been working on over the past few weeks and will keep doing. Although there are still a lot of problems with need for speed. Payback. Most of the issues that gamers were talking about have been fixed. Next game on our list is Destiny 2. After the eagerly anticipated Destiny 2, the follow-up to 2014's Destiny, released in 2017, Bungie encountered significant criticism. When the developer concealed previously released material beneath new DLC, they found themselves in hot trouble. A unique difficulty setting dubbed The Prestige was available in Destiny 2's Nightfall and Raid events. To access this mode, players had to meet a certain power level requirement. Up to the release of the game's first DLC, everything was good. Along with raising the game's level ceiling, Bungie also raised the required power levels for each prestige version for both events when they released the Curse of Osiris DLC. Players had to have a power level of 270 to participate in the raid, but Nightfall had to be at 330. Fans were not pleased by that. Less than a week after the story leaked, Bungie issued a formal apology for the lockout and corrected the problem by changing the trophies and accomplishments players were prevented from obtaining but they didn't decrease the necessary power levels. Not only that, but Bungie also came under fire for manipulating the post-game experience point system that allowed users to get bright engrams. Players were essentially incentivized to pay real money through microtransactions in order to get bright engrams, 
as the developer lowered the rate at which players gained experience points XP, after reaching the game's soft level maximum. Their fix for the XP system was a formal apology, but it was not an official one. Well, that's something, at least. Up next, we will discuss Fortnite. In July 2017, Epic Games launched its cooperative sandbox game, Fortnite, into early access. The publisher and developer want to make the game fully free to play by the end of 2018. Prior to the September 2017 debut of the game's standalone Battle Royale mode, players would spend hours building forts, and all of their labor would vanish overnight. Players' forts vanished as a result of alterations made to the Plankerton, Canny Valley, or Twine maps in an early access patch. The time players invested in constructing the forts was in vain, even though their resources were subsequently restored. Even worse, Epic Games made no prior announcement about the move. They then apologized quite openly, saying, OK, first we screwed up and missed a huge section of our patch notes. I'm sorry. We recognize that you have dedicated a great deal of effort to creating your Storm Shield base. It serves as your residence, defense, and source of inspiration. They also committed to being more open going forward. Now we will talk about Middle Earth, Shadow of War. Many people praised Middle Earth, Shadow of War, the follow-up to 2014's Middle Earth, Shadow of Mortar by Monolith Productions. Even though it blatantly extends Act 4 and forces players to buy microtransactions in order to see the game's genuine final. However, publisher Warner Bros. Interactive didn't receive backlash until they made the decision to charge players, in certain territories, for the Forthog DLC for Shadow of War. The DLC was made in memory of creator Michael Forby, who died in 2016 at the age of 43 from a brain tumor. In an explanation of their decision to charge for the DLC, Monolith and Warner stated that, Despite what the fine print said, all proceeds would go to the Forty family. They also said that they would only advertise the donation within the United States, avoiding some states because of their charitable promotion laws. Warner Bros. Interactive promised to donate to the Forty family despite the fact that all gamers who had purchased the DLC were given a refund and the material was made free. Lastly, we will talk about Star Wars Battlefront 2. Just one week before DICE's Star Wars Battlefront 2 hit shop shells, EA released the most notorious apology of the year, if not the decade. According to an EA Access user, he had to work for almost 40 hours to accumulate enough credits to unlock Darth Vader. After conducting more research, the same individual shared his results on Reddit, sparking a global dispute that severely damaged Battlefront 2's prospects of being the largest game of the year. EA swiftly addressed the matter and made an ambiguous attempt to allay worries by providing an explanation of the game's operation. That obviously didn't work. The publisher responded, and while they felt they were coming from the right place, it was universally panned. The post has received the most downvotes in Reddit history as of right now. Actually, on social media, the phrase, sense of pride and accomplishment, is frequently repeated in a variety of contexts. That could take a while for EA to get over that. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more content like this. Make sure to turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Just click the bell icon right next to the subscribe button.